In this video about multivariable calculus challenge problems, we'll be looking at problem 79 from section 11.1 .1 of the multivariable calculus book by Rogoski and Adams, third edition. The problem says to show that a line of slope t through the point negative one zero, like you see here in this picture, intersects the unit circle that you see in a point x, y, whose coordinates are functions of the slope t. It might have been better to call it the slope m, that's what most people are used to, but we'll go ahead and call it t like the problem tells you to. Conclude that these equations parameterize the unit circle with the point negative 1, comma, 0 excluded. That will not actually be a point that is obtained with this parameterization. Maybe you're familiar with using cosines and sines to parameterize the unit circle. So this is something different. These are rational functions, ratios of polynomials. Show further that t equals y over x plus 1 as well. Um, I should remark before I start, and before I show you some Mathematica code that makes this picture and makes an animation, that we're not really going to, I'm not going to prove these things for you. I'm going to indicate how you might prove them. I know with my students, when I assign problems like this, I want them to write complete sentences to explain what's going on. I'm just going to give you the idea of how to solve these things and how you might go about proving them. But now I want to go to the Mathematica to um, take a look at how I made this picture and make an animation that illustrates this idea in this problem. So here we are to the Mathematica notebook to illustrate the ideas in this problem. Don't worry if you don't know Mathematica, just appreciate how this helps you understand the problem. Problem 79 again, you can describe it as a rational parameterization of the unit circle with one point missing. Here are the rational functions that we saw on the piece of paper. I'm going to use this code now to make the static plot that you can see right there from the piece of paper. Here's the code. You can pause the video if you're interested in that, but now we're going to go down to the animation and see how we can think of this in terms of motion if we'd like. Now usually, okay, t typically is thought of as being time, though it is the slope of the red line that you see here in this case. However, within an animation, you certainly can imagine it to be time as well. I can play this, I can see time go by, and I can see how the line changes its slope. And as that slope changes, you see the unit circle get traced out, except for the point negative one zero. Now you might be wondering, well, we're not even getting real, real close to the point negative one zero with this particular animation. And that's because the parameterization of the entire unit circle, except for that one point, is only as t goes to plus or minus infinity. We are approaching that point asymptotically. Got a little extra in this picture that you can see I've got some arrows in the picture. What are those arrows? Those are examples of vectors. We're going to see in coming chapters that vectors are real important in multivariable calculus, so this is a little preview of those things. This magenta colored vector, pink vector, is the velocity vector for this motion that you visually see here with this parameterization. You can note that at this point right there, it's pointing in the instantaneous direction of motion at that point. You can see it's tangent to the curve. Its length is also equal to the speed. It gets longer as t heads towards zero, and then gets shorter as t continues toward plus infinity. That's because the motion that you're visually seeing here starts slow, speeds up, then slows back down again. Okay, that's what's happening with that uh, magenta vec vector. It starts short, then gets longer, then gets shorter again. The orange vector is the acceleration vector, which is the derivative or rate of change of the velocity vector. And the fact that it's less, th the angle between these two arrows is less than 90 degrees right at this spot here is sort of supposed to indicate that it's kind of like the orange vector being the rate of change of the magenta vector is causing the magenta vector to get longer. So the motion is speeding up. Whereas when the picture, when you're up here, now the angle between those vectors is bigger than 90 degrees. It's kind of like the acceleration vector is causing the magenta vector to get shorter. It's not literally causing it, but it doesn't hurt to kind of imagine that. Got a few other graphs I want to show you. Static graphs. Take a look at this graph. You see that the, uh, the thick, bold red graph is the graph of x as a function of t, and the blue one is the graph of y as a function of t. Think about the way these graphs look and go back to that motion that we saw and it should make sense. The x-coordinate of the point as it moved around start clo started close to negative 1, increased through 0 to positive and reached a maximum at positive 1 when the slope of that intersecting line was 0. Then it went back down 
toward negative values again and then down ultimately toward negative one as t goes to infinity. The blue graph is the graph of the y-coordinate. It starts out negative and close to zero, decreases as the point moves down the circle, reaches a minimum of negative one before increasing to a maximum of positive one before decreasing to zero again. The maximum occurs, for example, when t equals one because that's the slope of the red line that you see here. Right about there, t equals one. That's the maximum uh, of the y value of that point on the parametric curve. The dashed lines you can see are the, the graphs of x of t quantity squared and y of t quantity squared. Now why do I include those? Actually that's very much related to solving the problem, which we'll do here in a minute. Um, the point is always on the unit circle, we saw in that animation. So x of t squared plus y of t squared for any t should equal 1 because the equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So if you imagine visually adding these graphs, these dash graphs, you should imagine that they it seems plausible that they should add up to being close to 1. In fact, they do and they equal 1 no matter what t is. And you can graph the speed if you're interested. This magenta colored graph uh, is the speed. You can see it starts out close to 0, increases to a maximum as we saw when t was 0, and then decreases towards 0 again. Okay, so that's the mathematic I want to show you. Now let's go back to the problem. All right, now we're on to actually solving the problem. We want to show again that uh, the point of intersection of this line with slope t and going through the point negative 1, comma 0 with the unit circle is given by the point with these coordinates and therefore these equations parameterize the unit circle with that point excluded and show further ultimately that t also does relate to x and y this way as well. Now, the authors have really made it a little easier on us than they could have. They could have made us solve for x and y as functions of t. Instead, they made it easier. They gave the, these things to you. That does make the problem easier, and I will solve it based on the assumption, that assumption. But at the end of the video, if you're interested, I will also talk about how you could derive these equations if you did not know them. So there's really two things to do. Step one is to really show that... Uh, x and y, based on these equations, satisfy the equation of the unit circle. x squared plus y squared equals 1 for all t, no matter what t is, that cannot be emphasized enough. That should be part of what you do. So that's step one. And step two, we can also show that the point with these coordinates satisfies the equation of this red line show that, well, what is the equation of that red line? y equals, it's a line, so it's got a constant slope of t. t would be the multiplier of the x, and if you think about it, um, if t is fixed, the equation of that line can be thought of as this way, because it goes to the point negative 1, 0. This is kind of like point-slope form. If x is negative 1, then y is 0, no matter what t is. And in fact, step 2 automatically verifies this thing right there, because you can just divide both sides by x plus 1, assuming x is neg not negative 1, like we would be ultimately seeing. Once again, show this is true also for all t, no matter what t is. Okay, so let's do the first one now. Step 1, it's just a matter of plugging and chugging. Take these equations, plug them in for x and y, and simplify. So I've got to take x and square it. The equation for x is 1 minus t squared over t squared plus 1. I've got to square that. Add y squared. Take 2t over t squared plus 1 and square that. Don't set it equal to 1 too soon. It's, you have to verify that this equals 1. So we just need to simplify this as is. There will be a common denominator of t squared plus 1 quantity squared. What will the numerators be? Well, the one that you get from this part here, 1 minus t squared quantity squared, will be 1 minus 2t squared plus t to the fourth. You can double check that on your own. And then when you square 2t, you get 4t squared. Now we just need to simplify. We can rewrite it as t to the fourth plus 2t squared plus 1. The 4t squared and the minus 2t squared give you plus 2t squared over t squared plus 1 quantity squared. Now what are we hoping? We're hoping this equals 1 for all t. Does it? 
Well, it's almost like magic. It does. You can factor the top. It is a perfect square. And in fact, it equals the bottom. Those cancel for all t to 1. And we're never dividing by 0 here. t is a real number. It's not complex. We're never dividing by 0. This is true for all t. And that should definitely be emphasized. OK, so that verifies step 1. Step 2. What should I do? Well, how about take this the right-hand side of this equation, <clears throat> replace x with this, and simplify and see if you get that. That would verify that this equation is true for all t. So take the right-hand side, t times x plus 1, and replace x with this expression right there. So I get t times 1 minus t squared over t squared plus 1. Don't forget the plus 1 there. Now I need to add those things, getting a common denominator of t squared plus 1. This one already has that denominator, so I just have a 1 minus t squared. And then 1 would be the same as t squared plus 1 over t squared plus 1. So I need to add t squared plus 1 up there. The t squareds cancel. 1 plus 1 is 2. This t can be brought up into the top so that you do get 2t over t squared plus 1, which lo and behold is the same as what y is. This is y for all t. OK. Well, technically, there are a couple more things to do. Uh, well, first of all, verifying this fact, again, just like I said before, does allow you to quickly verify this fact. We should briefly explain why this point is excluded. Why is this excluded? And the key thing there is that x in this parameterization can never equal negative 1. If you assumed x equal to negative 1, you get a contradiction. Assuming x can be negative 1 implies 1 minus t squared over t squared plus 1 equals negative 1, which, after multiplication of both sides by t squared plus 1, would mean that 1 minus t squared equals negative t squared minus 1, right? Multiply both sides by t squared plus 1. The minus t squareds cancel, implying that 1 equals negative 1, which is, of course, a contradiction. This symbol means contradiction. The assumption that x is negative 1 in the parameterization leads to a contradiction that 1 equals negative 1. That's not true. So this assumption must be false. x cannot equal negative 1 for this parameterization. So definitely this point is excluded. Why is every other point included? Well, technically speaking, that would take more proof. I would be fine with my students if you gave a brief graphical argument like we saw with the Mathematica graphs. So technically, I'm done with the problem. I would like, if you're interested now, to spend some time talking about how to derive these equations. If you're not interested, you can certainly leave the video. But I'm going to now talk about how to derive those equations. And it really is essentially just solving <clears throat> a system of equations. The equation for the unit circle. You want that to be true, and you want the equation for the line to be true. You want to think of this for fixed value of t. For fixed t, solve the system of equations for x and y. Solve for x and y. And it's also going to be helpful to know, to remark, that certainly uh, the point negative 1, 0 solves both of these equations for any t knowing, that'll be helpful, knowing that x comma y equals negative 1 comma 0 is a solution for all t. So that point is on both these graphs, as you see in the picture. OK, um, so how do we do that? Well, it's a matter of substitution, and then using some factoring, so to speak, though that factoring will be best done with long division, as we will see, you can replace the y in this equation with this expression. So take t times x plus y quanti x plus 1 quantity and replace uh, y with that. So we get x squared plus, I've got to square this now, t squared times x plus 1 quantity squared. And I do want to set that equal to 1 to help me solve for x. This is now a quadratic in x. 
The coefficient of x squared, think about it here, will be 1 plus t squared. The coefficient of x will be uh, 2t squared. And the constant term after subtracting 1 from both sides to get 0 on one side will be um, t squared minus 1. Now I could use the quadratic formula. Um, and um, I guess I didn't try it that way. But I'm not going to bother with the quadratic formula. Not sure how complicated it would be. But instead, I'm actually going to do some long division, which sounds more complicated. But it actually turns out pretty nice. Knowing that this point is a solution, in other words, x equals negative 1 is a solution to this, means that x plus 1 will divide evenly into this thing. So I'm going to write an x plus 1 and a long division symbol and actually try to do this long division of polynomials. I'm going to divide x plus 1 into this expression. And what should happen? I should get a remainder of 0 because x plus 1 should divide into this. And the quotient should ultimately give me the formula for y as a function of t up here. Well, or for x as a function of t. And then I can use this equation for figuring out y as a function of t. OK, so bear with me here. So here's how I go about doing it. I ask myself, what do I need to multiply x by to get this? Well, I would need to multiply it by 1 plus t squared times x. Now actually do that multiplication and put it underneath here, but also multiply it times the 1 and put it underneath this term here. Now subtract. These two things cancel. What happens when I do this minus that? I'm going to get, uh, let's see, 2t squared minus t squared will be t squared. But then 0 minus 1 will be negative 1. I'll have t squared minus 1 times x. Bring down this t squared minus 1. And now do your next step in the long division. What do I need to multiply x by to get this thing? I need to multiply it by t squared minus 1. And if you do so, you get t squared minus 1 times x, and then also multiply it by 1, giving you a t squared minus 1. Subtract, everything cancels, you're left with 0. That's what I wanted. A remainder of 0, x plus 1 divides this thing. And this is the quotient. And if you set that equal to 0, that's going to give you x as a function of time. Solve for x, you'll get 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared, which is the same thing as this up there, which is what we wanted. And now one more final step here. Take this equation and this equation to figure out what y is. y is t times x plus 1. 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared plus 1. We did this before. Get a common denominator. You're going to have a 1 minus t squared plus 1 plus t squared over t 1 plus t squared. The t squareds cancel. 1 plus 1 is 2. Bring the t up on top. You get 2t over 1 plus t squared. OK? So that's the equation for y. So that's how you would derive these equations if you did not know them. And I'll let you look at this as I end the video.